This video is all about vertex array objects, or VAOs. Before we start, to get the most out of this video, I really recommend that you have at least a firm understanding of attributes and the two attribute functions, vertex attribute pointer and enable vertex attribute array. My attributes part one video covers the basics of these functions, and my attributes part two video goes into quite a lot more detail on vertex attribute pointer. So feel free to pause this video and watch them first now. Next, if there's only one thing that I want you to get out of this video, it's this. See these five functions? If you've been watching this series, you should immediately recognize at least four of them. And that's it. That's the most important thing to know about VAOs. After you bind a vertex array object, the VAO's contents will only change whenever you call these five functions. Okay, let's continue. So, vertex array objects were previously available in WebGL 1 as an extension, but are now part of standard WebGL 2. Their job is to safely create, update, and store a snapshot of vertex attribute settings. You'll use this snapshot in your render loop, and that means that you don't have to go recreating all your attribute settings again and again for every draw call. And they're completely optional. There's still debate in the OpenGL community whether there's any technical or even performance reasons you should use VAOs, but the way I see things, they provide a really attractive way to move code that really, really looks like initialization code out of your render loop and into an initialization stage. In other words, it's a programmer convenience, not an essential tool. Let's look at some actual code and see how VAOs change the structure of our applications. At first, my program will have two frames. Initially, I won't be using request animation frame here. I'll be simulating new frames directly so that I can show you step by step some of the issues we face when we write our render loops without VAOs. This is a slightly modified version of the code we built in our first attributes video. Our vertex data is in a float32 array. There's enough data for those four point primitives you see to the right. Each row of data in our array has x and y position coordinates, three RGB color values, and a single point size measured in pixels. We're using vertex attribute pointer to tell WebGL how to unravel our data and enable vertex attribute array to tell WebGL that yes, we want to use our data rather than the default or some generic attribute values for each of our three attributes. Then we do our draw call. Let's add some code. We're going to do a second draw call here with the same program but with a different set of data. Now, let's simulate a new animation frame. Since we're not using request animation frame, in this case, we have to call clear and flush. Again, this is just to simulate a new animation frame. I definitely don't recommend doing this in your own programs. Now, what happens if we call draw arrays again? Well, we get the second set of points. I mean, of course we will. We're just redoing the last step of what we just did. But now, what do we have to do to draw our first set of points, the ones that we started with? How do we do that? To do this correctly, in this situation, we have to call at least vertex attribute pointer again for all three of our attributes. Yes, we've already called vertex attribute pointer six times already, and yes, we've been using the exact same arguments for each attribute. But remember, the first three times we called it, we had buffer one bound, and the second time, we had buffer2 bound, and buffer2 is still bound now. And vertex attribute pointer, it doesn't only take note of its arguments, it also retains a reference to the currently bound buffer, and in this case, that's buffer2. So really, we need to call bind buffer to switch to buffer1 and then call vertex attribute pointer for each of the attributes. Then we're done. And now it works, we have our first points again. To render the second set of points, we have to do that all over again. Bind buffer 2, call vertex attribute pointer for all three attributes, and then draw. Thankfully, we didn't have to rerun enable vertex attribute array again, but we might have. If we'd disabled one of the attributes for one of our sets of points, then yeah, we'd, we'd have to, but we didn't here. So our render loop looks like this. 
Bind buffer one, run vertex attribute pointer for all three of our attributes. Bind buffer two, run vertex attribute pointer again for all three of our attributes. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, 60 times a second. I think newcomers to WebGL might be surprised at this. I mean, if you'd asked me when I first started learning WebGL 1 if vertex attribute pointer and enable vertex attribute array were initialization functions or render loop functions, I don't know what I would have said, because very obviously they are initialization functions. But no, stupid me from the past, they are a critical part of our render loop. But now with VAOs, we have a choice. They allow us to save a snapshot of the most static parts of our vertices in its own object and restore it at draw time. So you can either continue to repeat your initialization code again and again in your render loop, or you can be a sane person and do it once in your setup code. Same diff. So let's change our code to use VAOs. For our first set of points, create a VAO bind it, then call vertex attribute pointer and enable vertex attribute array for each attribute. Then unbind, calling bind vertex array null. A snapshot of our vertex information has now been locked away in that VAO. For a second set of points, create another VAO, bind it, call our attribute functions, and unbind. And all this happens once before our draw call. And now for the draw calls. For the first set of points, bind our first VAO, call draw arrays, and unbind. And that works. And now our second set of points. Bind our second VAO, call draw arrays, and unbind. And that doesn't work. Right. So, so the reason for this is pretty obvious. We called enable vertex attribute array for our first VAO, but not our second. But it's worth unraveling this for a second. Without VAOs, enable vertex attribute array will enable any attribute with that location, with that location's number. Using a different array buffer doesn't matter. That attribute location stays enabled. Different program with a new set of shaders doesn't matter. It stays enabled. Until you explicitly call disable vertex attribute array, it stays enabled for the life of your application. But VAOs are created empty, or at least populated with default values. And by default, all attributes are disabled until you call enable vertex attribute array. So it's your job to set up each VAO correctly and completely. So we have to add enable vertex attribute array to our second VAO. And now it works. Now let's use request animation frame for our render loop. Doesn't that look better? So at this point, you should have a few questions. This is a simple one. When do I have to bind a vertex array object? Binding of VAO is only needed in two circumstances. First, if you need to run one of those five functions, either when initializing the VAO or when you want to change some of its contents. And second, when you're doing a draw call. Here's a good one. You keep saying that there are five functions, but you only showed three. You're a big fat liar. Okay, that's not a question, but fair call. So actually, there are a total of five functions that directly change a VAO's contents. Another function is vertex attrib divisor. You'd use this if you were doing your draw calls with draw arrays instanced or draw elements instanced. We've not looked at these functions in the series yet, but I promise we will soon. I don't like calling this an advanced technique, but I want to put this off a little bit more until I've covered more of the basics. The other function is bind buffer, but only for the target elements array buffer. Remember that? It's for when you're drawing using vertex index data so that you can call draw elements or draw elements instanced instead of draw arrays. I have a whole video on draw elements if you're not sure what this is about. So yeah, these are, to the very best of my knowledge, the only functions that directly change a VAO's contents. Another question, do I need to call bind vertex array before binding my regular vertex buffer? Quick answer, no. Long answer, no. Useful answer, calling bind buffer with anything other than elements array buffer will not change the VAO. However, calling vertex attribute pointer does change the VAO, and as we just saw a minute ago, you may need to call 
bind buffer to do that. But it absolutely does not matter when you do that, just as long as it's before you call vertex attribute pointer. You can do it with a bound VAO if you want. Do it, for example, if you think it makes your code look cleaner. But you do not have to bind your vertex buffers just for the benefit of your VAO. The VAO will not see it, and the VAO will not retain it, unless you call vertex attribute pointer. Here's a related question. Do I need to rebind a VAO to change some data in my vertex buffer, such as position or normal data? Or what about my index data? What if I'm using elements array buffer and I want to change some of the data in it? Again, no you don't. VAOs retain a reference to your buffers, not a copy. Basically, they care about where your buffers are and not about what's in them. So you can change your buffer data till the cows come home. As long as you don't delete a buffer, you're good. And that's it. So let's do a quick review. VAOs are optional. You do not need to use them. VAO simply lets you move some initialization code out of your render loop. When you create a VAO and bind it, it will only pay attention to the results of five functions. And your basic workflow goes something like this. You create a new VAO using create vertex array, you bind it, you call any of those five functions as you need, and then you unbind it. When it's time to do your draw call, you bind, draw, and unbind when you're done. And if at any time you want to change any of those settings, you bind, make your changes by calling one of those functions, and unbind. And that's pretty much everything that you need to know about VAOs. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything to add or correct.